When I was in my 30s, I thought getting to 50 was going to be awful. But you know what? Being in my 50s is probably my favourite decade so far. And I think it's been really liberating. And in this video, I want to share 15 things that I've quit since I turned 50 eight years ago. And some of them are funny, <laughs> some of them are practical, and some of them are really quite deep. And yeah, maybe you'll resonate with some of them, maybe you won't, but let's crack on and I'll tell you all about them. So the first one for me was quitting an unrewarding job, which I did when I was 52. And there were lots of reasons for quitting that I've spoken about in other videos, like a really horrible menopause and probably related to undiagnosed ADHD and just feeling a bit stressed out and not coping very well. But making the decision to give up an unrewarding job freed me up to do things and pursue things that felt more interesting for me. And it was scary and it was challenging, but boy, was it rewarding. So I think one of the the biggest challenges we have is feeling like we're stuck in a rut and there's no way out. But making that decision and realizing that I was more than my job and I had more to offer than just my job was so big a change for me. And I have to say, I'm so glad I quit. I've done things since I quit my job that I never thought I would be able to do, like writing a book speaking on a TEDx stage, building my own business, having time in the day to decide for myself how I'm going to spend my hours, all massively rewarding. And yeah, I did take a bit of a, a cut in money to begin with, but it's amazing how much you don't need as much as you think you do. And then of course, once the business picked up, that wasn't a problem anyway. And yeah, so that's number one, giving up an unrewarding job was such a big thing for me. The second thing I'm quitting, or I have quit, are big nights out with, with workmates. We used to have regular events and nights out, celebrations, and they normally revolved around lots of alcohol and lots of groups of people going out and I don't know, maybe they were, <coughs> excuse me, having fun. And I used to think I was having fun, but then I realized that I wasn't really having fun at all. I don't particularly like being in big groups of people. I don't like the push and shove of being in pubs or clubs. And I don't know, that kind of feeling claustrophobic. And I don't really like having to make small talk, especially when it's so loud that you can't really hear what you're talking about anyway. So it would always end up with lots of alcohol just to feel more comfortable and a big dent in my bank balance and a hangover the next day. So I'm really not, not sorry to say goodbye to the big nights out. The third thing I've quit is watching the news. I wouldn't say I never watch the news, but actually nowadays I get my news from YouTube and I just watch small snippets. And I always work on the assumption that if something really big is happening, I will find out. I don't need to sit there watching the news, repeating, repeatedly telling me all of the bad stuff that's going on in the world. I just find it kind of messed <laughs> with my mental health, if I'm honest. I would be stressed and worried about stuff that I could not control, that I couldn't influence, and that it would just play on my mind. And I used to listen to the news in the morning when I was getting ready for work. And if the news was bad, and let's face it, most of the time they don't report on the good stuff, it would affect how I felt for the rest of the day. So for at least the last eight years, I haven't watched the news, not really. Number four, I stopped wearing high heels 
and decided instead to wear sensible shoes. <laughs> it was quite a big decision to not wear heels, especially since I had absolutely tons of shoes. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit of a shoe hoarder, if I'm honest. So I had lots and lots of really nice stiletto heels and high shoes and wedged heels, but I was never wearing them because, I don't know, just as I got older, comfort was more important to me than style, I think. Plus, thankfully, the fashion has changed and it's much more acceptable now, I think, to be in flats, to be in trainers or sneakers. And they're so much more comfortable. And I used to worry that I wouldn't look as professional if I wasn't in my high heels. But oh boy, so much nicer not having to totter around, slipping and sliding on polished marble floors or looking like a complete baboon when you're trying to run. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you're tottering along in your high heels. So that's number four. Number five, I stopped taking myself so flippin' seriously. I used to really stress about if I'd said something that I thought might make me sound a bit stupid, or if I did something, I don't know, if I made a mistake or said something a bit silly. I used to literally stress about it for days. And the truth is, most people had probably forgotten it if they'd even realized that I'd said anything silly. And they weren't even bothered. So why was I stressing out about what other people might be thinking and feeling so hard on myself? And I found that since I've stopped taking myself so seriously, I'm much more willing to try new things. I'm much more willing to be seen as a novice. I think that was a lot of it uh, with me. I didn't like to be thought of as a novice who was just learning something. I was the kind of person that if I went on a training course, I'd find all the books that I needed to read or that I could read to make sure that by the time I got to the course I knew everything so I wouldn't get caught out and be made to look silly and then I'd get there and find that <laughs> nobody else had bothered to do that and they all didn't know much but I'd, I'd have spent so much time preparing in advance to make sure that I didn't look silly and now I think do you know what be the person that asks the stupid question because Chances are, if, if I'm wondering, other people will be wondering too. And this has really shown up in things like learning to do ballroom and Latin dancing. I did some dancing when I was a kid and I really enjoyed it. And we started dancing, my husband and I started dancing again a few years ago. And I've been able this time to let go of the need to be ahead of the game. I'm actually feeling really comfortable being a student and admitting that I'm learning. And that might seem a bit silly. I've always been a learner. I've always been willing to learn and happy to learn. But I've never liked to appear not to know. And I'd get very stressed about it. So that's another thing I've I've quit taking myself too seriously and it's enabled me to try new things and really enjoy learning new things. The sixth thing is I've stopped asking for permission to do the things I want to do. This has been a bit of a game changer when I've been working for myself because when I talk about asking for permission it's really about asking for validation I guess that I'm good enough or that I'm qualified enough or that I know enough and it's probably not about asking actually practically for permission it's not like I'm saying can I do this it's more stop stop feeling like I needed that permission to do what I wanted to do to experiment to try and to play and to put myself out there and take on new and scary things. It's been a bit of a mindset shift. I've always played it safe. 
I was the kind of person who didn't really go for many promotions in work because I didn't know if I would be good enough to, to get the promotion. I didn't want to fail and it was much easier not to do something than try and, and not, not get it, not, you know, and try and fail or to try and fail. Not to try and fail, nobody tries to fail, but to try and fail. I've decided in my 50s that I don't feel I've got anything to prove anymore. And I'm not gonna sit around waiting for this perceived permission from the world to do the things I want to do. Like, like this, like walking around in the woods with people running past, looking at me a little bit sideways because I've got a camera in front of me and I'm talking to it. In the past, I'd have felt really silly trying to do that. In fact, I just wouldn't have done. Or I would want somebody to tell me that it's okay to do this. No, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just going to do it anyway. And if people look at me sideways, then so be it. As I pulled up earlier into the car park and got out, another lady was just getting her dogs out of the car. And we had a little chat and she asked what, it, what this was because I've got uh, my DJI Pocket 3 in my hand, which looks a bit strange. I think it looks a little bit like a, a robot. Uh, is it um, Wally? I don't, know, I don't know, like a Disney robot. Um, but she asked me what I was doing and I said, I'm, I, I'm going to be vlogging. I don't think she knew what a vlog was, but there you go. Um, so yes, I'm quitting asking for permission. Number seven, I've stopped worrying about trying to look young. I think there's so much pressure on us as we get older to stay youthful, stay young, and it can be draining. And at the end of the day, I'm not young, I'm 58. So I'm not suggesting that I've quit trying to be healthy, although I'm probably not as healthy as I could be, um, but I've quit worrying about trying to look young. I've stopped buying all the, the creams and the potions and all of the other stuff that I've probably spent way too much money on in the past, trying to avoid the wrinkles, avoid the gray hairs, you know, all of the things that are perceived as getting old, signs of getting old. I've decided to quit. I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. I'm just going to, I'm gonna sit down. I'm just going to accept that I am who I am and I am the way I am now and be happy with it. And since I made that decision to not worry too much about trying to constantly look young, I feel so much freer. I don't have to worry if I want to go out one day without any makeup on, but I can choose to put it on if I want to make myself feel a little bit more glamorous or just you know, <laughs> look a little bit less tired maybe. But I'm doing it for me now for the right reasons as opposed to feeling obliged to look or be a certain way. Oh, number eight. And this one will please my husband. I've stopped driving so fast. Whenever I used to drive, he used to get go nuts because he's a very set, sort of steady, slower driver than I am. But I was always in a rush. I always needed to get there. I always enjoyed the thrill of driving a little bit faster. And now I think, oh, it's too stressful. And I, there's nowhere that I need to be in such a hurry that I have to drive fast to get there. It's taken a lot of stress out of driving. I really enjoy driving. I know lots of women I talk to find that they get more scared and more anxious about driving as they get older, but I love it. I really enjoy driving. And I find it's much more enjoyable now that I can take my foot off the pedal a little bit and not be in such a rush. I think when I look back, I always thought I was a good driver. <laughs> I think we all do, don't we? But I probably drove too fast and I probably drove too close to the car in front, probably quite impatiently, kind of getting frustrated that they weren't driving as fast. And I probably had a bit of road rage in there as well. 
a little bit frustrated with other people on the road. And I've just learned to let go of all of that and just relax more. Now, that could be because I no longer have to have the commute to work since I started my own business. So I can plan my day a bit better. I'm not so much on other people's deadlines and um, I've got, I can give myself a little bit more time to get places. But I also think it's just uh, an age thing. I think I'm just a little bit older, a little bit calmer and a little bit more sensible these days. The ninth thing I've quit is wearing contacts. I have tried to wear contacts for years. I've worn glasses for about 15 years, full time. And they're very focused and I, I don't really need them too much for distance work. I need them more for close up work. There's no way I could read this without my glasses on. And I got so fed up with putting them on, taking them off, putting them on, taking them off for close up work, especially when I was working and, and working on a computer. So I went to very focals, but there were times when I didn't want to be wearing glasses. So I started trying to wear contact lenses and I would struggle through. <laughs> I'd put them in in the morning and then by about mid, you know, midway through the afternoon, my eyes would be itchy and sort of, I'd want to, oh, it would be just so uncomfortable. And I'd end up taking them off and putting my glasses on anyway. And they were costing money every month. They were like daily replaceable ones. And my eyes always felt a bit dry. So I had to have like ultra moist contact lenses. And it was just a bit of a pain. And then I remember just, just a couple of years ago, giving them another try. And I felt really naked without my glasses on. My glasses have become such a part of who I am and I feel so much more comfortable with them now than I, than I used to. So the contacts have gone and I don't have to worry about itchy, scratchy eyes anymore. I don't have to worry about forgetting to take them out before I go to sleep. I don't have to worry about trying to put them in, which I was never very good at. So contacts have gone. The tenth thing, I stopped dyeing my hair and embraced the grey. I mean, it's more white than grey. But in actual fact, my hair started going grey in my 20s. I don't know if it's related, but when I was pregnant with my daughter, my first child, my hair started to go grey during pregnancy. And I'm not saying that she turned me grey, <laughs> but it did start then. And I would say probably by the time I was in my mid to late thirties, the whole of the front of my um, hair is prob was probably as white as it is now. The rest took a lot longer to change. I'd gone from dark hair gradually over the years, had it lightened and lightened and lightened because there's nothing looks more weird than having dark hair. And when your roots come through, they come through white. That just is bizarre. So I was constantly dyeing my roots and then I gradually got my hair to, to quite a light blonde so that when the white roots came in, they didn't show so much. And it, during COVID, I just thought, you know what? As soon as I can get to a hairdresser and get my hair cut very short, I'm gonna get the blonde cut out and just let the gray come through naturally. So it's been like this now for probably three years, two and a half, three years. And oh my God, it's brilliant. I love it. It's so much easier and I don't have all of the hassle of having to dye it at home. I, I go and see a hairdresser to dye it. Hello. It just makes life so much easier. If it makes me look my age, then so be it. If it makes me look older, I can't help that. I can't do anything about it. But I do find that I just, it's so liberating not having to, to dye my hair. A few people have said, you know, how, what colour do you put on your hair? What colour do you have it dyed? And like, no, this is it, this is natural. But it is what it is. And I'm quite happy now to embrace it and just let it be au naturel. Number 11, I stopped trying to fit in. I have ADHD, was diagnosed a couple of years ago. And I've realised that all of my life, I've tried to fit in like a square peg in a round hole. 
and I've tried to wear a persona that I felt would fit in better and I've never really felt like it could be completely me. That meant things like acting like an extrovert when I've realised I'm very much an introvert, acting like a very self-confident, sociable person when actually I'm like everybody else. I'm not confident in all areas and whilst I'm not antisocial, I do like my own company. And I guess this ties in as well with not wanting to go out on big nights out because I didn't enjoy them. And I think that was me trying to fit in to a perceived persona, perceived persona that I thought was how I should be. And I thought that was how everybody expected me to be. And I'm just starting to wonder now how many people in the world are also doing that trying to fit into a norm that we think is what everybody expects us to be when it's nothing like what we really want to be. And I'm letting go of that. In fact, I've let go of that and I don't mind if I don't fit in. Since I stopped trying to fit in, I seem to fit in better, which is a, a bizarre outcome. It feels like people are much more willing to accept me for who I am. And maybe that's because despite my best efforts at trying to fit in and be what I thought people wanted to be, it wasn't authentically me. And maybe that showed through. Number 12, stop cleaning toilets. I mean, our toilets still get cleaned. It's just that I'm the one that's not doing them anymore. And this isn't because I think I'm too good to clean toilets. It's just I don't like doing it. I hate it. I don't like housework. I, I hate it. And there are people out there who don't mind doing it and I don't mind paying them to do it for me. It's really strange. We've ha we have a wonderful cleaning lady, Mickey, who comes in once a week and she does a fabulous job of keeping our house clean. But I don't particularly like doing housework and neither does my husband. We've done it for 30 odd years uh, because it needs to be done, doesn't it? You can't not do it. But I think we both realised when we left our jobs and we were working for ourselves that we were spending quite a lot of time not doing the things we wanted to be doing because we were doing the things that we didn't want to be doing, which was cleaning the house. So it's more than just the toilets, but that wouldn't have been so funny, would it? Number 13, we quit doing big weekly shops or big monthly shops and big supermarket trips. And we quit doing sort of meal planning and I don't know if anybody will relate to this, but I absolutely hate that whole, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? That big debate that we seem to have all of the time. And the answer from my husband was always, oh, I don't mind, whatever you fancy. And it always felt like this big challenge to try and come up with ideas for things to eat. So now we have a meal delivery service. We have HelloFresh at the moment, might not always be HelloFresh, but we've had HelloFresh delivered now for probably getting on for three and a half, four years maybe. And it takes away all of the stress of trying to decide what to have for dinner every night. We don't have as much food waste because we're not buying stuff and then not using it. We don't have to do the big weekly or monthly shops. We just buy the bits that we need as we need them. And the main bulk of our meals are just delivered to us every Sunday. They come in a box, we divide them all up, we put them in the fridge and we put the meat in the freezer and we take it out as we need it every day. Oh boy, that has been a game changer. We even do Christmas dinner in a box, you know, we have it delivered. And it just, it's probably saving us a lot of money as well because every supermarket trip, you never only buy the thing you need, do you? You always end up buying more than you went for. So not only is it saving us uh, a bit of money, but it's the convenience, but also to say, just not having to have those conversations around the pain of what are we gonna have for dinner tonight? Number 14, I've quit feeling obliged. As a people pleaser, I wanna say a recovering people pleaser, but I don't know if it'll ever go away. It feels a little bit like um, an, ad an addiction where, you know, I might be able to manage it. I don't know if it will ever disappear completely. But as a people pleaser, I often will say yes to things because I feel obliged to, 
even though they're not what I want to do, even though probably as soon as I've said yes, I feel that sense of resentment when you've committed yourself to something that you really don't want to do. And quite often these things are for the benefit of somebody else and not for the benefit of me. So that's not to say I won't go out of my way sometimes to help other people. I absolutely will. Um, but I, and I get a buzz out of that. But if it's something that I am asked to do and I don't want to do it and it's not going to benefit me and that other person doesn't really need my help, then I, I quit feeling obliged to do it. I quit feeling obliged to be a certain way, to act a certain way, to show up a certain way. I've just and that obligation, that feeling of obligation is so draining, that, that feeling of, I should be doing this, I must do this. I think whenever we find ourselves putting the words, oh, I should be doing this, it feels like an obligation, as opposed to, I choose to do this, or I could do this. So if somebody asks me something, I, to do something for them now, I kind of push it through the, the could and choose test. I could do this. Do I want to do this? Am I, would I choose to do this? And if the answer is yes, I'll do it. And there won't be any resentment or feeling of obligation there. If the answer is no, I wouldn't choose to do this, or yes, I am going to feel a bit resentful if I say yes to this. Yes, this is going to impact me more than I want it to, then I'm happier now to say no than I've ever been in the past. I think this is something that a lot of midlife women struggle with, is this need to please everybody else. But we've done it all our lives. Now is the time to let that go, I think. That feeling of being obliged to do things that we don't really want to do. And number 15 is I've stopped following fashion trends. Now, I've never been a fashion icon, but I've certainly spent far more money over the years and bought clothes that I felt I should have because they were fashionable. Hiya. Hi. Even though I don't particularly feel great in them, they probably weren't that comfortable, they probably weren't the right style for me. Now I think I just want to wear what I want to wear. I don't want to keep up with fashion trends. I very, very rarely these days go shopping for clothes in full price stores. I tend to go to charity shops. And the reason being is I do like clothes. I have a lot of clothes. I get bored very quickly with clothes. But when I buy from a charity shop, there are a number of reasons that I feel that make, there are a number of things that make me feel good. One, I feel like I'm not wasting money on clothes that I know I'm going to get bored with very quickly or that are going to be out of style in six months' time. I also feel like I'm doing a little bit towards sustainable clothing, so reusing you know, uh, stuff that means it doesn't end up in landfill. I feel as if I have more choice, bizarrely. You'd think there'd be less choice, but I feel like I have more choice. I have much more chance of getting something that I really like and I enjoy wearing if I bought it from a charity shop than I do if I go to a full price shop. And I get, I love a bargain as well. So I think that's probably another part of this. I absolutely love getting a bargain. And I've had some beautiful clothes from charity shops, really nice makes, beautiful condition at a fraction of the, the, the cost. And there are things that I like to have in life that are a bit of an indulgence that I can't buy second hand. And by buying stuff in charity shops and not feeling that need to follow fashion, it means that it frees up money to spend on the things that I want to spend my money on that I couldn't buy second hand. So that's my number 15. I'm just gonna head off for a walk in our beautiful woods and I will talk to you all again soon.